Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of <clears throat> AW Weekly Wrap Up. I'm your host, Ethan Black. Today, we're going to talk last week's Rampage, Collision, and obviously all the stuff during uh, this week's AW. Preview the upcoming shows, Top of Ring of Honor, real quick, and some news. So, we'll just get right into that now. So, I'll give you some updates on Eddie Kingston's G1 Climax. It is over with, he had 8 points, 4 wins, 3 losses. So, on night 15, he lost to Never Openway Jim Dave Finley, 16 with 34 seconds. That match was turned the first block winner of C block. And then on night 16, this, this was the final D block action. He was teamed with Yuta Nakashima. They lost to Evil and Show of House of Torture, 8 minutes, 31 seconds. Then on today's show, August 10th, he was in a six man tag match with. Oh, Rush John Hodge and Double Two Thirds and Never Oh Boy Six Minutes Tag Champs. They defeat Grey Ocon and R. Jeff Cobb, nine minutes and 43 seconds. So that was Eddie Kingston in New Japan. And that's all the news. And then we'll jump right into last week's rampage, August 7th. So we kick over the trios actually. Keith Lee and the Hardy's man, Jeff Hardy. Defeating Kip Saving the Butcher and the Blade, eight minutes and 54 seconds. And a J defeating Sky Blue, seven minutes and eight seconds. The Mogul Embassy's mm-hmm. Air Fox Shreya Strickland goes against Logan Cruz to Sean Perez, 3 minutes 16 seconds, in the main in a parking lot brawl. Bring more world champ Clay Custanoy and John Moxley up Lapo Combo Club, Club defeating Chuck Taylor and Trent Bretta of Best Friends at 18 minutes. Mm-hmm. Honestly, uh, this out last week's Rainbow, only one I recommend to you is the parking lot brawl. And then we go to AW's collision from August 5th, the same night as WWE SummerSlam. So for the Edo World Tag Titles in the opening match, FTR, the champions, Cash Reader, Dax Harwood, Devin Big Bill, and Brian Cage, 15 minutes, 3 seconds to retain the title. Chris Dallin retains a TBS over Mercedes Martinez, 10 minutes and 14 seconds. Bring of our television, James Mojo, Devin San Francisco in 14 seconds. House of Black, Brody King, Buddy Mavis, Malachi Black, retains the trio of Action Dre, Darius Martin, Lee Johnson, 9 minutes and 8 seconds. Jay White, Devin Metalik at 5 minutes, 11 seconds. Enemy for the real Edo World title. Ricky the Dragon was the outside official. CM Punk, the champion, defeats Ricky Starks, 22 minutes and 19 seconds. Out uh, this past week's collision, all the matches are or the World Tag Title match, the TBS title match, and the, the Punk Starks match. That's the only three I recommend checking out. But now we will go in the Dynamite where we kick it off with a mandatory Jericho Bridge study meeting. Where everybody, all the members, but Chris Jericho was uh, in the ring. So Matt Menard introduced Chris Jericho. Jericho gets in the ring and says, "Why well, didn't come out with them?" And then Derek Garcia cuts him off. And basically, he's had no confidence. And it does his dance and it walks away. And then Jake Hager said he went all over the world with Jericho. He uh, basically knew him long enough, but which is true. And then he said no. Basically, everybody just walks away. And then Andrew Parson. He loves being a sports entertainer. He took being on as a group as a badge of honor. And then he walked away. And then I know Tate Mello said she felt sick, not from pregnancy. And then she went after she has a baby, she'll come back and win a title. And then, then Jay said later in the show, she has a woman's title match, which I'll get to in a bit. Uh, she's going to win as well. So basically, they had no confidence. Chris Jericho was being a leader. Matt Menard said that he went to Jer- Jericho being a show here when he's 15, but he uses for his patron by t shirt. And then when he got released from Dirty, his wife was eight months pregnant, and Jericho provided him to his husband in AEW, and then he mentioned Eddie Kingston and Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens in WWE, hit Jericho's guts. So basically, everybody was all left sister Sammy Guevara. Jericho tried talking, but Sammy Guevara smacked the microphone him and then told him to listen for once. He said to receive he put Steen for a table, it's because he was loyal to Chris Jericho. And then he walked for the crowd. I'm a little surprised he didn't leave with Tay Mello, to be honest with you, but Overall, I thought the same was it wasn't too bad. And then we we come up from right for that pick a trade with Jericho, but Don Cass interrupted that he was so sorry. Then Jericho's gonna have an answer for him next week. <clears throat> and then their opening match, the brother battle of the brothers tag match. The Young Bugs, Matt and Nick Jackson, defeating the Hardys Matt and Jeff Elements 15 seconds VPT trigger on. I I thought it was a pretty good match. Uh, it was alright. I liked her dumber nothing match a lot better last year, but it was a fun little tag match. This one, seven out of ten. But uh, these two teams can, can have good matches. It's good seeing Jeff, though. The, the, the first time I match, I believe, in a couple months, I believe. I'm not 100 percent sure, but overall, it wasn't a bad tag match. But yeah, that was the match. And then after the match, they call FTR because on collision, FTR issued a <clears throat> challenge to Unbox to all in. So Nick Jackson's FTR wish they come out, and then uh, Nick Jackson's all. All in and Excalibur announced that the match may be official, which 
I can't wait for this tag match. It's the third time these guys are facing off. I can't wait for it to happen. So that's our uh, second match official that we knew, but I'll run on all those cards after this review. Then we get another tournament. I know some people are complaining that it's a tournament. Some are saying are qualified. If, uh, honestly, they said it's a tournament, so I'm counting it as a tournament. So the winners go to a women's style match at All In at a field forward match. So the brackets is Akershia versus AJ. This will be on this episode of Dynamite. Then on Rampage tomorrow, sorry for Sky Blue. And then next week on Dynamite, it's the buddy for Spurt Baker. Tony Storm did not have a She gets to buy because she's cashing in her rematch. So, yeah. <laughs> And then we go to the village of MJF and Adam Cole at a uh outside of a trampoline park. He told him uh to wear shorts and he thought he was going to skim do some rats, but Cole jumping to have fun as yet. So MJF didn't see that until Cole said there's dodgeball. So MJF just started from dodgeballs at little kids. And then Cole tell him to stop. And some little girl walks in, calls him nerds. That's what two men were doing at the amusement park. Cole does talk like that, and then she pulls uh a heel move by flipping them off. So as soon as she leaves, Cole tells him Jeff one more and he throws the ball as we fade to black. Honestly, this statement was really, really great. I really enjoyed this. I got a kick out of where MJF threw the ball and the poor kid got hit in the nuts with the um dodgeball. But yeah, this statement was great. And this won't be the first time we see these two guys on the show. We'll see them a little later. Then we get a Black Bull Comic Club promo. Is it uh Best Friends learn a lesson from the park off fight? And then Moxer says he said Flowers to Sue, best trim for his mother. And then Claudio brings up Pac to see if he'll pay for this, what he did. And Yuta says that he has to miss Wembley because he's injured. And then Mox like, they don't fear death, but death fears him. That was actually a cool little line. But BCC's, that was a good poem from them. Then we go to our second match, an FTW title, FTW rules match. It's basically just a false count anywhere match. Jack Perry, the champion, defeats Robin Dam, nine minutes and 34 seconds. Feel low blow and a roll up. Honestly, I really enjoyed this match. I just want to seven out. Honestly, spoilers this is actually my match of the night out of these four matches. Not all of them were bad necessarily, but I'll get to more later. But I did like spoiler Jack Perry got put for a table off top Robin and paying him for a chair and ducks and Bryce Fisbro and Taz couldn't get over how the chair got sunk on top, which I, I was actually kind of surprised too. But for already for 52 years old, actually looked really, really good. I, I was pretty impressed with that, but. I, I already saw some good frog splashes, but overall, I really enjoyed his FTW rules match. We'll probably, I imagine that all out, oh, sorry, all out will probably get Perry for his hook, which it should be the match, honestly. And then Renee gets back to Lucha Bros, and then the Ray Fizz calls him Black Poop Cower Club, and Pentagon Junior's catchphrase. And then they out of Alex Hunter, Arbor and says they're going to get revenge, but overall, it was, it was just a promise that their match, it was, that was pretty good. Anyway, MJ and Alan Cole. Make the run out of the ring. And then he's in there's a large foot now everybody they were mid and foot heavily out in fake and then made Scott Scott strike them and said their face plays in the United States America's Midwest. But he was having no bolt strike them. And then Cole started talking and MJF said uh before they will promo about he says he's just gonna be white that his nineteen eighties Hogan was the snort, making a cocaine joke, which I got a laugh out of that. Then he continues but Cole something says he don't want to do promo about so MJ apologizes to Dane, Ohio. Since they're making history at Wembley, so they, they should go all in making hit more history and have tag titles on their waist. And then Cole Dodds will have another set on the Ring of World tag titles that's currently held by Aussie Open Mark Davis Call Fletcher. And he says he owes his entire career to Ring of Honor. Then he breaks his comments as he was a former multiple time Ring of Honor World Champion, Television Champion, Survivor to Fittest winner. His number actually held the Ring of Honor, which I kind of forgot to be honest. I thought he did for some reason. Then he brings up teams like Red Dragon, his best friends, Kings of Wrestling, and the Briscoes, late, the late great Jay and Mark Briscoe. And then basically they challenged them to a match of all in pre show. And then we saw Roger Strong yelling for Adam. And then Colsey could believe he once went tag those with himself an actual legend and friend of Rod Strong, which is true. So MJ calls him a simp, and then he's got to talk of his jails that's growing fives and wants Strong to get in this car, go home. Simpson John in his bed crying into his knee and put his head, listen to Terry Swift, and then call him a blame B, B word. This PG show is only keep PG, which I laughed so hard at that. And then he basically did go to an ex girlfriend mode. You know, I haven't talked to him like that. And then the kingdom comes out and hugs him. And then MJ, Cole in frustration pushes him, Jeff, and he apologizes. And then he told him to go check on Rock Strong close to that statement. So honestly, I will give the spoilers so if you don't want to hear this. Um, you can skip like couple seconds. So Aussie Open does have a match on Rampage. They do uh, accept the challenge after the match, so we do get that match official for the pre-show. 
But I'll talk about all the online stuff after the Dynamite review. There are three matches of the show. I'm actually kind of surprised they did four matches on the show. So Bible quote, Black Bull Comic Con, Clay Custom and John Moxley defeating the Lucha Bros 13 mid 6 XV roll up on Pentagon Jr. after they grabbed the mask. This was okay. This was a fun little match. I just won 6 out of 10. But honestly, I don't know how that was the DQ where either you know grabs really Phoenix's foot and Aubrey Everts literally stared at him doing it, but whatever. But honestly, this this match was pretty fun. I just won 6 out of 10. Then after the match, uh, BCC kept the title Lucha Bros. I did get a lot of Claudio was wearing Pentagon's mask. I did get a lot about that, but I imagine hopefully in the next week or so we find out what Black Bull Comic Club's doing. And we go backstage, we see uh, Kenny, Alvin Brown starts Kenny Omega, and then he has his way for all in. Then Omega said he's going to sit there with Jim Ross next week. Top was featured in Don Cows, can I get a Kesha? He want Marvin's wanted to scoop, but Omega just walks off. So I imagine we're getting <coughs> the confirmation of Omega and Kesha at all in. And then Mogo MC comes out of the ring and then swerves his top goes to Seattle, putting the fear of God on Nick Wayne. It's about the wall, especially in his city of Seattle. And then AR Fox calls Darby out to the ring. Darby does do that. And then tells him he, he did he tried to call him for five years, but he never did. But he said he still gives him credit for his change in his life. And then he said he has friends. And then we see the lights go out. I jokingly thought it was House of Black at first. And then I said Bray White. I know he's with WWE. I was just making a joke. And then it was staying off. And then he takes the bat to swerve. And then points at the all. So we get that tag team coffin match. I'm a little surprised Nick Wayne's not going to be part of this match. I thought maybe they could do a trios, but it's whatever. But it's good to see Sting on AEW. I kind of felt bad for Darby though. So when they were chasing, Air Fox ran into the crowd, security jumps over and acts like put Darby in the face. That looked like that hurt. But yeah, so we got more matches made official for All In. <clears throat> and then our main event. I am counted as a tournament, so this is a semi-fall match for the women's title. A curse she defends against Anna J, and she retains at mid-26 feet at the uh, Kaitana. Honestly, I could not get into this match. Uh, I don't know. I thought their spots were kind of sloppy. Uh, I don't know. This I just couldn't get into this match, and then, especially the ending. I thought the ending just came out of nowhere. But yeah, so she wins at... 8 minutes to 48 seconds. I mean, Austin, not, I'm glad the women are main event, but Austin, this, 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 for this week, this, this should not have been the main. Honestly, I thought it should have been either the Hardy Boys and the Young Bucks or the FTW title match. But yeah, I mean, I, I so Cheetah hits Jay with a katana, try to go for it, but Andrew Bar tries to stop it, but Paul Turner makes the three count anyway. But yeah, that was the, I thought this Dharma was all right. It was, it was fine. I overall was going five or six out of 10. Honestly, oh, only matches I recommend to is the Young Bucks versus Hardys and the FTW title match. And I should actually just watch this whole. I would just skip the uh, women's title match and then watch DMGF Adam Cole stuff. Honestly, so Rampage on tomorrow. Yes, I'm recording this on Thursday, so tomorrow's Rampage will be Soraya versus Sky Blue in the other semifinal match of women's. So the winner will join Hikaru Shida and Tony Storm all in. Darby on for six man tag champ Brian Cage. Orange Cassidy defends the International Challenge Johnny TV. And for the ring of one time, Ozzy Oman defends the Outliners, True Magnum, and Tobar Floyd. Their inclusion on Saturday, only three matches made so far. The Acclaimer and Anthony Boss Bassmaster in tag team action. TBS team and Chris Down Will Nine Gill team up to go against Percy Martinez, Dean Monte, more tag team action. And for the trio's titles, House of Black defends his A Double World Tag Teams, FTR, and CM Punk. And then the All In card, I am not going to spoil the Rampage match, so I'm just going to uh, leave it alone. Uh, MJF defends the Adrian Walter against Adam Cole. FTO defends the World Title against the Young Bucks. Finals of the Women's Style Tournament. Her Kershaw defense is the winner of Sky Blue Saraya match. The Bunny or Brick Big and then Tony Storm. Tag Team Coffin match. Mogul MZ Swarcher and Eric Fox for Steve W. Elm. And for the Ring of World Title, Ozzy Open defends the Adrian Walter against MJF and Adam Cole on the pre show. And only two matches made for next week on Dynamite is. The party first for Baker in the final semifinal match of the Women's Style Tournament and Gate to the two thirds of six man touches versus Nick Wade and Darby Allen. But it's, <coughs> excuse me, the AEW stuff. I know we will go to the Ring of Honor. Just forgot my notes here. Let me grab it here. Sorry, just try to grab the Ring of Honor stuff here. All right, so the Ring of Honor card was. Duncan Castle for some JD opening match. Arn Savage just as Boulder and Bronson defeat Brady Pierce and Lucky Ali. The Infantry, Kari Bravo and Sean D defeat Booby, Mike, and Ziggy Dice. 
Lee Mortar defeating Andrew Everett. Tony needs to be Bat Buck. Proven Ground Match Woman Shape at the end defeating Rachel Ellering. Six Man Tag Champs Kate Zaggy Khan and Tony Leon defeating the Work Horseman Jay Drake and Anthony Henry. If the Work Horseman won, they would have got featured on Six Man Tag Titles. Layla Hirsch defeating Angela Risk. Cole Carter defeating Red Titus. Billy Starks defeating Robin Renegade in the main event in the finals of the Television Total Monk Terrace Tournament. Shane Taylor defeats Gravity. So that was the Ring of Honor stuff. And that's the AW Ring of Honor stuff for this week, guys. I'm your host, Ethan Black. I'll be back next week to all our usual stuff. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.